lighting here. There we go. Okay, I wanted to come on here really quickly because I want to talk about our thoughts, right? There are so many that have asked me, um, Zippy, how do you know that God is talking to you? How do you know that it's God's voice inside of you? How do you know what God is telling you to do and what he's not telling you to do? I have to say this. If you're claiming to be a follower of Christ and you have not heard God's voice, there is something wrong. Or if you don't know how to determine if it's God's voice or not, there's something wrong. So many people, so many people have put so many different distractions in their lives. And a distraction can be in the form of anything, TV, a job, a, a child, a husband, a spouse, um, events that you're going to, you know, just all these different distractions, shopping, you know, <laughs> Um, cooking, cleaning, you know, whatever it may be that you're putting as a distraction before God. Something that you, because I find that a lot of people don't want to be alone with their thoughts. They don't want to be alone. They don't want to be alone to conjure up what's going on in their hearts and their thoughts. And they don't, they just don't want to suffer through that. So they numb the pain with alcohol and drugs and with shopping and they distract themselves with TV and they distract themselves with eating or, or, or whatever it might be, drugs, whatever it might be, in order not to have those thoughts. That's how God speaks to us. He speaks to us through our inspired thoughts, you know. He puts an unctioning in us, a, a quickening, you know, in, in a sense, that um, we know for without a doubt that it's our thoughts. Um, when I was um, first coming to Christ, God brought this to my attention. And... Well, actually, it wasn't when I first came to Christ. It was actually a little later on in my walk. But he brought to my attention, he said, well, I, w I paid attention to myself one time. Um, God will say something to me right away. Usually it's my first thought that comes to me is, what God, is when God is speaking to me, right? But if I don't like what God said to me or if I don't completely agree or if I don't want to do it, I'll come up with other ways to justify doing what I really wanted to do. Um, for example, let's just say God told me not to watch a certain TV show. We'll just say that. Um, I battled a lot with things like this because, you know, I'll be like, well, um, you know, I'll look, at the, I'll look at the TV show and I know God told me to stop watching that TV show or I'll turn to a show or something like that. And... Um, God will put that quickening in my spirit. Turn that off. Don't watch that. Don't watch that. But I'll be like, oh, it's not that bad. This is just teen mom, you know. I was a teen mom, you know. Um, I know all about this. Why not? Why not watch this? But I'm just saying. Um, using it as an example. Oh, it's not that bad. These are just teenagers. What possibly harm could this do? You know, I'm, I'm in other words, I'm pushing away the first thought that God told me to do. I know what he told me to do, but I... I want to do what I want, what I want to do. So I'm sitting here, even though I know it's wrong, but I'm trying to justify reasons why it's right, you know, in my mind. So when God tells you to do something, you do it. You don't question, you don't, um, you know, say, okay, well, come up with reasons why you should do it. If God said no, no. If God said yes, yes. If God said go, go. You know what I'm saying? Don't come up with other reasons to to not go and do what God told you to do or to not say what God told you to say or let's just say for instance God told you you were in the grocery store and he told you this person is downtrodden I need you to go pray for them and you said oh that person looks like they're gonna beat me up I'm not gonna go talk to, I'm not gonna go pray for them oh I'm scared I'm shy I don't want to do it you know um it what what if they don't receive me? What if they what if they you know you just come up with all of these different what ifs and then then before you know it you pushed away what God told you to do and you're gonna do what you want to do anyway you know when I when I when I was in my walk God brought that to light in me and on a lot of things I'm talking about a lot of things it came down even to what I was going to cook for that day if God told me to cook something else, I'm going to come up with the reason why I need to cook brownies instead or whatever, you know. <laughs> I did that a lot, so I had to start really listening to God because I, I realized that I was missing out on opportunities that he had for me. Um, 
just say for instance with this YouTube channel if I had went my way and did what I wanted to do and write my book and or just just uh, well I wanted to write a book is what I wanted to do and I discussed this in another video and just be behind the scenes I didn't want to have to be on camera and share my testimony put a face to me you know what I mean and share my testimony here on camera on YouTube on the internet live in front of everybody you know I did not want to do that um, because I at, at first, I was just so ashamed to share my testimony because I felt like I was such a bad person, which I was, but it's the testimony that that's why it was important for me to share my testimony because God brought me through it. You know, it was a testimony of, of Christ in me now, but Lord knows I did not want to come on camera and discuss the personal thoughts of me. I didn't want to discuss how I was molested as a child or you know how how I was an alcoholic and 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 I was fornicating and and all of that. I didn't want to do that, you know. And then on top of that, the I knew what God had put in me. I knew all of the I've I've had notebooks and notebooks of messages and just thoughts and thoughts of messages that God put inside of me that I had in, in me all this time. But um I didn't I was afraid of how people were going to receive me and how people were going to think of me and I thought people were going to think I was totally insane because of I, I I'm not young but I am a younger minister, you know. They would think that maybe I don't have enough years and I'm not in a church building. That was another thing. <laughs> now I've since grown, you know. I know you don't need a church, but just saying, you know, all of these things come over came over me that I was trying to justify why I should not get on YouTube, why I should not get on this channel, but God kept pushing me, Zipporah, get on this channel, get up, make your channel, get, make your channel. When I did my first video and they just started flowing after that. And when God told me that he was going to bring the people that needed to receive what I was saying to me, that I didn't have to do any special work or reach out on social media or any of that stuff, God said he was going to bring who he needed to hear my messages to me. And that's what he's done. What he's done. All I've done is record on my Samsung phone. I have a phone. I don't have any uh, fancy camera equipment. Um, I'm recording simply on my phone in my room in my house. You know, <laughs> um, this is me. This is in my pajama shirt. You know, this is me. This is what you get. You know, with a <laughs> ugly old Afro proof. Um, no makeup because of course God told me to put up makeup, put up hair, put up weaves, put up all that stuff, fake, 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 all this stuff, you know. Um, he made me put it all away and he made me come on here raw as myself, giving my testimonies and what he has put in my heart to put to his people, um, to tell his people. And all I'm saying is you've got to step out on faith and do what God has told you to do, no matter what anybody else says or thinks of you um because let's face it if you don't do what god tells you to do you are going to be tormented <laughs> you are going to be in a place where you're just not don't have any peace or joy or anything you know so you've got to listen to what god says but you cannot do like i did when i first came to christ um justifying what i wanted to do when god told me to do something else and it's something that I still have because it's a battlefield in your mind. It really is. It's something that you're going to battle with probably throughout your walk with God, you know, um, because the devil tries to get to you through your thoughts. He really does. And he tries to make you justify things or make you deceive you with things that are right when they are wrong. That's why it's it's always important to seek the Lord on everything, whether he whether you have a dream um, uh, a vision or somebody telling you something that you should do, you should take it all to God because you don't want to be misled either. Um, I've been that person as well that, <laughs> um, thought that I needed to seek everybody in my walk when God was trying to teach me through revelation, through the Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ. I didn't need that and I no longer need to rely on anybody else, you know, unless God gives me the unction to ask somebody for advice then I will but I will I, I don't email everybody or text everybody or call even my mom and ask her about things because I go to God about it and God tells me what I need to do he guides me look at the life of Jesus or of Moses or of David of Noah of Abraham they all had 
the Spirit of God and God led them into what to do and sometimes just look at Abraham he had to leave his family his the, the place he grew up and he didn't know where he was gonna be going Moses whenever he fled to the mountains he didn't know what that he was going to have to come back to from the unctioning of God, you know, God's voice through the, birth, through the burning bush to come back to Egypt and save his people. You know, um, Noah wouldn't have been able to build the ark that he built for all of those animals as well as his family and all of those creepy crawlers and everything as well as to withstand a flood and withstand weather and wind and you know everything tossing around turning around being in that ark for as long as they were to help with animal feces and all these different things that he had to face while he was in that ark if he didn't have the spirit of god he would have been totally lost the spirit of god brought him through that period of time think about that you know, I'm sure those animals were pooping everywhere. What if people got sick? Um, you know, God made it to where the the box was, I mean the box, the ark was big enough for the animals and there was enough sufficient air and food and storage for food. And, you know, I mean, God had, he had to really listen to God in order to build that ark the way that he needed to build it in order to survive the the conditions that it had to survive in. I mean, being tossed and turned, wind, rain, you know, being rained on to where it didn't get, you know, destroyed in the, in those heavy flood waters. You know, I mean, he had to really listen. Moses, when I, I'm sorry, um, David, whenever he became king, he had to listen to God in leading the army and in, in, um, in, in, running a kingdom you know he really had to listen to god and same thing with jesus that his steps were ordered and orderly way up until the day he was crucified god ordered his steps so we need to make sure that we're listening to god when he's ordering us um they didn't go to everybody to to get advice they got their advice through revelation through the holy spirit so it's important for you to learn that if you don't know God's spirit, if you don't know God is speaking to you, if you don't know when God is speaking to you, or if it's you, or if it's the devil guiding you, you've got to get before God and remove all of the distractions that are distracting you and keeping you from spending that time with God and knowing him and his voice and his spirit. Because you cannot just go to everybody for advice. Eventually, you're going to get steered into the wrong way because these people don't know you like God knows you. Even if it's your husband or whoever it is that you think is closest to you, your mom, your aunt, your grandma, your daughter, whoever it might be, you, they don't know the spirit in you. They don't know your life from the beginning to the end. They can only tell you from the outside looking into your life. They don't know. God is all knowing. So if you do not know God's spirit and God's heart and God's voice, you need to get before God and you need to remove everything in your life. I don't care what it is <laughs> that's distracting you from knowing God's voice. And you've got to know it and you've got to ask God to give it to you until you know without a doubt the way you will know that it is God speaking to you. Okay, because you cannot get through this journey or this walk without it. You cannot rely on other people's to guidance <laughs> alone you can't you cannot you eventually like I said you're going to get steered into the wrong way um because believe it or not even family members even friends can get envious of you and they can tell you something that is totally wrong for you you know they really can so you've got to really get in front of your father and ask him for his guidance and know without a doubt that it is him speaking to you and that it is his spirits that you it, that it is his spirit that you have. I love you guys. I hope you guys have a good day. Bye.